Well, boy, do we have a fun signature style Saturday for you today. We're going to do some fun projects. Number one, we're going to create this beautiful tableau here, starting with the orchid flower arrangement, thinking about the future in a heart shape, and also how we might greet our sweetheart on that big day. We're going to take some jade plant cuttings. We're going to propagate them. We're going to show you how to do that. We're going to talk about some little life luxuries. What I am reading right now, well, that's a lot to cover. So what do you say, Stuart? Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, my motivation today is twofold. Number one, the temperatures took another nosedive and it is 14 degrees outside right now, way too cold to do any outside gardening. So let's do some indoor gardening. And number two, recently the whole team went on a field trip to Calvert's looking for a lot of different things. It was so much fun. And one of the things that I became absolutely obsessed with there were their huge, maybe Stuart can put up an image of them right here. They're huge jade plants. And when I say huge, I mean, massive elephantine they were really huge I'm also really infatuated um, with rippled jade plants which I discovered oh a couple of years ago they're used a lot in Australia and recently I bought one when I say recently within the past year I got one from Bustani Farms up in Stillwater so I thought okay given those two things my motivation from Calvert's and from the cold weather let's take some jade cuttings and try to propagate them so that I will have even more jade come growing season that I can use both indoors and I can use outside. So what do we need? Well, number one, we need some jade cuttings. So from my gorgeous jade plant that I have in the parlor, I took a number of two to three inch jade cuttings. These are, um, like I say, two to three inches. And then I made sure that I took the cut right between the leaf node. Now, what is a leaf node? Okay, I should say leaf nodes. The leaf nodes are these little ridges, circular ridges around the stem that show where a leaf will project from. Now, one thing I wanted to make sure that I did and one of the supplies I needed was some really sharp secateurs or some really sharp pruners. I wanted to make sure that they were disinfected. So I keep in my garden truck which I have just recently organized and stocked. I keep a little spray bottle of rubbing alcohol and that will disinfect my pruners. This is a good thing to have for again, both indoor and outdoor gardening, especially if you're pruning anything outdoors that might have some kind of viral or, or fungal problem. Okay, so number one, I took some cuttings with my sharpened secateurs that had been, um, that had been sanitized. Then I wanted to make sure also that I had some some rooting powder or some rooting hormone. You can get this at most garden centers. I bought this online, but here's a tip. A lot of times, I actually was looking at this on Pinterest, and a lot of times I saw people and they would just take their cutting and they would dip it straight into the rooting powder. Now you don't want to do that. And why do you not want to do that? You will then contaminate the entire bottle of rooting hormone if something is wrong with that cutting. This is particularly crucial crucial if you're using if you're using a cutting like a rose cutting or something that might have rose rosette or some kind of viral problem so put it into a little container. So in addition to your secateurs, obviously your cuttings and your rooting hormone, you're also going to want to have some kind of medium in which you are going to root those darling cuttings. Now you could use sand, you could use perlite, you could use different very, very porous agents, but I always hit the easy button and I make sure pretty much that at all times I have some of this Espoma organic cactus mix because it is already um, it's already formulated for succulents for cacti and for things like these jade cuttings now I'm gonna cheat a little bit here because I have not aged or um, 
let time do what it needs to do to callous these cuttings because they really need to be calloused before I put them into the rooting medium. So I'm going to pretend like one of these is calloused and go ahead and pot one up. But these I'm just going to keep on a tray here. I am going to let them callous over for gosh as much as two to three weeks maybe. Is this the ideal time to be taking cuttings? No, the ideal time would probably be in the summer when they were more in a growth mode, there's higher humidity and the roots would start to come out much more quickly. But it's not to say you can't do it in winter and since I am desperate for a gardening project, I'm gonna do it now. So I've taken my cuttings, I am going to start five little pots of them because these will be will be cute while they are growing but also when they start putting out new growth and they actually have a good root ball and are a full-fledged plant so that's the next thing on our supplies that you need some kind of little little containers now you could use one large container and you could put multiple cuttings in that but I think these aged gray ones that I got both at terrain and at Michael's I think these are the sweetest little pots and I like them all aggregated together in this basket. Now I'm aggregating them or putting them all together for a couple of different reasons. One is just ease of transport so I can move them from one location to another without having to move each individual pot but also because they kind of like to be nestled together. I'm not really worried about powdery mildew or any kind of fungal problems and the additional humidity in the winter time will help them hopefully put out new roots much more quickly. So that's the other thing you need, some kind of little pot in which you're going to put your potting medium. And then, as I said, I just put these in a basket. Now, something else that I did is I have a plastic liner inside this basket. Why? Not so much because these are gonna be watered so much that it will catch any drippings from the pots themselves when I water them as if you would um, protect anything, a house plant, you'd have some kind of reservoir to catch any water and protect your furniture. That is not the reason I am putting a liner with a lip on it inside this basket. I am doing it because I am periodically going to just fill that reservoir itself up with water so it will provide a little bit more humidity in the very, very dry air conditions in the winter time. And I'll show that to you a little bit later. So if we are going to fast forward, we are going to pretend like by TV magic, these are already calloused over, then what I'm going to do after they've been calloused is, if there are any leaves, let me use this as an example, if there were any leaves coming out lower, then I probably would remove them. And yes, you can propagate leaves too, but for me, that just takes too long. I prefer to use cuttings, which make for, to me, almost an instant plant. So I'm gonna take this cutting, Assume it's been calloused, and then I'm going to just douse it into that rooting hormone. And then I'm going to take my, let me see if I've got a dowel in here. If I don't, then I can use my finger. I'm going to take this pot and I'm going to make an indention in it. Now, is this soil pliable enough that I could have just stuck it down in there? Yes, but what would happen if I did that? It would, as I am putting it in there, it would wipe, have wiped off all of the rooting powder, so I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna make a little indentation. I could do that with a dowel, but since I don't have a manicure, I'm just gonna do it with my finger. And then I'm just going to tuck this in. Now, what I did prior to this, at this point, I am not going to water it, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to put it in bright, indirect light. But what I did do beforehand, and one of the reasons I really like these kind of bags is, I very, very slightly moistened the soil mix before I put it into the pots. So I could just take this plastic bag over to my faucet. I could just very, very lightly moisten it, and then my potting medium is ready to go. So, then I just take the remainder of my cuttings. And in this case, I'm gonna leave that little bottom, that little bottom piece on because I think there's enough of a root node. 
or a leaf node there because the leaf node is where the little rootlets will project from. And I'm just going to tuck that in there. Now, you can also do this, and I have seen it done, where you take the cutting after it's calloused, you put a little bit of rooting hormone on it, and then you could just take a large pot and you could do nothing but level out the soil and just lay it on top of that soil mix. Just that contact alone sometimes will force it to start putting out rootlets and then you can just tuck it in. But again, because my motivation is to make for almost instantaneous plants, I'm gonna go ahead, take my calloused cuttings, stick them in the soil mix, and who knows, maybe by Valentine's Day or this spring, I will have cute, cute little pots of jade plant, of, of rippled jade plant. Now, the other thing, could I do it? Yes, I could. I could take multiple cuttings and put them in the same pot if I wanted them to be even that much fuller and that much more like a final plant that in and of itself had its own integrity. So there you go. If you are in need of something, uh, some kind of project to tackle while it is warm and cozy inside and and not outside, then you might try propagating some jade cuttings. And speaking of things that you might want to watch tomorrow at two o'clock Central Standard Time, one o'clock Eastern Time, we are going to do a Linda Vauder Live and we're going to be celebrating our thousandth video, which actually we did here recently. But nevertheless, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. We're going to do some amazing giveaways of some of our favorite sponsors, Monocora Honey, High Sea Boots, Garden Gate Magazine, um, Cool Job Gloves. Anyhow, you definitely are going to want to participate for that reason, but also just to be part of what's hip and what's What's happening yep. <laughs> right here um, on Linda Vodder Live. So I hope you will save up your questions, save up your comments, and join us tomorrow. Well, I am really pumped about our little life luxuries today. And first of all, I'm a gal. This is a luxury that costs nothing, and it is just being mindful of color echoes everywhere you look. And I just love the color echoes in this little vignette right here. Uh, you know, as simple as like not only the gorgeous amaryllis bulbs and the things behind it, but also even my lipstick, I think. Leah just pointed out that my lipstick is a color echo with these gorgeous Dancing Queen and these other beautiful amaryllis bulbs um, from Color Blends. Thank you, Color Blends. Okay, so on today's Little Life Luxuries, these are some really good ones. And you will note that most of my Little Life Luxuries are things that solve problems that I have or solve, uh, or solve some kind of issue. And it's not just more stuff, it's things that I need for a specific purpose. I.e., in this instance, I am getting ready to do some traveling and I noticed that all of my luggage tags are completely worn out. Now, I got these in this really garish yellow very much for a reason. Why, you asked, Linda, did you get this, these in your, this garish yellow? Well, because I am not someone who likes to tie a ribbon to her, <laughs> Stuart's nodding, to her luggage. But this way, I will know almost immediately against my black luggage that the luggage is mine because these will stand out. Likewise, I also needed to get a new passport holder and I got it in this same brash yellow so that I can find it in my bag. All too often, I've kind of freaked out when I can't find my passport or I can't find something because it's black and it is in the abyss of my purse or my bag or my carry-on or whatever, and then I unnecessarily freak out. So this time I decided to go almost fluorescent and get it in such a bright color that there will almost be no missing it. And so that's my tip is get really, really bright 
flight luggage tags and passport holder. I've ordered one. It just hasn't arrived yet. Okay, now this definitely is a luxury because I did not need these, but I did want them. So when I moved into the cottage, it was part of my playing with a new color palette, a lot more blues. Um, you may recall that I got some blue spoed plates because I, I just want to mix up my color palette a little bit and the cottage speaks more to blue tones than my other house did. So I saw these wonderful bowls. You may have seen them too online. They're all in wonderful shades of blue and they're all different patterns. Now I like these mostly because they just give me a smile, a jolt of joy in the morning because Hubs and I have been using these for our breakfast breakfast muffin for our scrambled eggs for our little bowl of yogurt with granola in the morning and they just make me happy they're not too large so kind of instinctive portion control but I also like them because I can divvy them up around the cottage and I can put one on um, the sideboard in the parlor to use for keys and change I could put one in the bathroom because they're small enough if I wanted something for a uh, soap in my loofah a sponge. I just like them because I think they're eminently practical. And once I get tired of using them in the kitchen, I can reinvent them by just moving them to a different location in the cottage and pressing them into service for something different. Now, this may be a little luxury that I have shown in the past, but I love to have things kind of coordinate. So I got this cute little vessel at um, a thrift store years and years ago. I actually have a smaller version of it. It's one of my favorite things. I like the fact that it's kind of this dirty chrome. It matches this little tray. It matches the same finish on my candlesticks. But what I like about it is that I can use it to hold matches, which is, as you know, kind of an infatuation of mine along with taper candles. So I got some of these long matches, but then I also just searched, can I get a strike pad? I'm about to lose my matches here by turning this upside down, but can I get stick on strike pads? And indeed you can. So I got a stick on strike strike pad to put, that's hard for me to say, to put at the base of this container and really any containers that I want to use to hold these matches because I don't like to look for matches. I don't like to look for the little match boxes which tend to just hide everywhere. This is front and center and it coordinates and finishes the ensemble of my galvanized metal table. So that's a very inexpensive um, little life luxury that I also think would make a brilliant Valentine gift. So you could go thrifting, find a little vessel, get some of these matches, and the matches come in different color sways and different colors. Get a strike pad, put that on the bottom, and then gift it with a small inexpensive candle or some pink tapers or something like that for Valentine's Day. Okay, another problem-solving little life luxury, and, and this one I am both um, I'm happy to show you, but I'm also a little bit sad to show you because this is one of those microwavable neck wraps. So if you are someone that is having neck pain for any reason, then this is the ticket because you can microwave it. It's got some kind of filler in it. Um, it might even be some kind of I think sometimes they're even kind of buckwheat or seeds or something, and you can microwave it, um, and you can also probably freeze this one, and then you just, if you're really, really cold and you can't warm up, even if your neck doesn't hurt, you can put this on. I like the fact that this is kind of weighted. So just like a weighted blanket, it makes me feel kind of secure. It makes me feel a little less anxious. And when it's warmed up, it makes me feel less anxious and comfortable. Now, why am I sad to show you this? I'm sad to show you this because Darling Carrie, um, the bug whisperer, she made one of these for me as a gift. 
and I don't know where it is. Somewhere in the move, it got mislocated, and I, I don't know where it is, and it makes me sad because I would have liked one from her a lot better than this one. But when I was looking for it and I couldn't find it anywhere, I just decided to bite the bullet and get one of these. This would also be great, I think, um, on an airplane, if you're always cold on an airplane. I like the fact that it's got these little hook your thumbs on them handles. It's, it's just kind of fun. Okay, something that again, I needed like a hole in the head, but was not that expensive. And it was also in my color of the month, which you might remember is kind of the steel gray, a pale gray. And I saw this and I loved this silhouette. So it's got kind of a mock turtleneck. It's got cap sleeves and the reviews on it were simply great. And so I have a gray skirt and I wanted to do that tone on tone thing. And so I decided to order it. Oh my gosh, do I love this. I love it so much. I just ordered it again in a navy blue. I told Leah she needs to test this out. This is so figure flattering. And if you've got neck wrinkles, it kind of hides some of your neck wrinkles. Um, it, it would make a great layering piece under a jacket, under a blazer, under anything. It's very chic. You could really dress it up or dress it down. And like I say, it's just so comfortable. So I got this in gray and I also got it in blue, which by the way, is going to be the theme for our Valentine's Day. It's going to be a blue Valentine instead of a pink or a red Valentine's Day. And we're putting together a Valentine's list of fun blue things. Why? Because I'm about blue right now. Um, and this will be blue in any shade, not just like September blue, which was kind of that sky blue. This is going to be blues in every shade, which is why I decided to treat myself to a navy, a navy one of these shells. Okay, speaking of blue, I also, you know, I had to rethink a lot of things at the cottage, and one was I had so many table linens for my massive dining room table that I had at the other house. Now, did I keep all of them? Yes, because they also happen to fit my large dining table outside, and I will be using them outside when I entertain. I can also kind of fold them in half and use them. But I wanted some things that really met the scale of this lit fad uh, wooden dining table for my breakfast nook and I found these. I love the texture of them. They're just runners. I love the fact that this is kind of in an orange tone that picks up some, some of the tones in the painting behind me and then because they were so inexpensive I also got one in blue and these are just kind of fun and this would just make I think really a a very inexpensive good gift, whether it's to yourself or whether it's for someone else. Um, I think that's about it for my, my little life luxuries. None of this is very expensive, uh, but they all solved kind of problems that I have or challenges that I have as I'm out and about traveling, but also as I am home cozy at the cottage. Well, on today's segment of what we are watching, what we are reading, and what we are listening to, um, this, this kind of has a theme, and one thing rolls into another. So I was listening to a favorite podcast of mine, uh, Gretchen Rubin, Rubin's The Happiest Project. I don't know why I'm, I've talked too much today. I'm having trouble getting my words out. Um, the Happiness Project, and she was talking about a concept called No Homework Book Clubs, where you could have a book club where there wasn't a designated book, but where everyone kind of convenes and they just share what we share right here. So see, we're ahead of the curve. We're really ahead of our time here. Um, what people are reading, what people are listening to, what people are watching. So instead of a designated book or whatever that you may or may not have read, everyone just shares interesting material that they are consuming and it's especially I think valuable during these cold cold days um, so when I thought about that I thought okay so this is this is what we do here we kind of just have our own little community 
um, No Homework Book Club. And I do hope that you guys participate. So make sure in the community tab or in the comments below, please share what you are reading, what you are listening to, what recommendations you have for me and everyone else on this channel, because I think it's so valuable. A lot of you told me how much you enjoyed Bank of Dave, which was kind of a, um, um, it was a dark horse. It was something, I don't know why, I just decided to watch it. I don't watch that much TV, and, and I was so glad I did. So along those lines, here is a movie that you should watch, I think, not necessarily because I think it was a very good movie, but because it had so many different levels of interest to me, and that is, Leah, it was The Wild Wedding, W-I-L-D-E Wedding, and it had Glenn Close and John Malkovich in it. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, it's because they paired up in an absolutely brilliant movie called Dangerous Liaisons, based, I believe, on an Edith Wharton novel, if I've got that correct. It was, it was just brilliant. They were both scarily good in it. Um, they weren't so scarily good in this movie, but it was interesting to see the two of them together where they're much older and, and they, they have matured. So it was just fun to see the two of them together. It was also interesting for me to watch because it, it just seemed like they were trying too hard to be kind of a Nancy Myers movie. Um, it's complicated or something's got to give and it didn't quite make it. Um, but nevertheless, it was, it was entertaining. It was fun to watch and I hope you'll watch it as well to see if you can kind of see some of those same dynamics that I saw in it. And Glenn Close is just wonderful as is John Malkovich and they, they are both aging brilliantly. So it's fun to look at it from that perspective too. Um, okay, what I am reading, I am reading a number of different things right now because I always have and when I say I'm reading, um, it's not, please don't think, oh, she read all that this week and then she read all that the next week. No, these are books that sometimes I have ongoing that I read over time. Um, and sometimes because I get them on my Libby app and it gets turned back in and then I have to check it out again after it's been on a waiting list. So I am now waiting for this book um, from my local library, Slouching Towards Bethlehem by Joan Didion. Um, I am a Joan Didion fan and that's also a special that you might want to watch. I think it's on Netflix um, and, and it's autobiographical and she actually is in that special, that documentary. And so I have not read Slouching Towards Bethlehem and I am getting ready to read that. On a lighter note, I am reading two different books also. Shut the Front Door by Chelsea Brown. And I love this because it gives lots of tips on decorating on a budget and decorating with what you have. I've just started looking at it, but so far I find it very compelling. And then this one you guys may already have. Um, it's called Farm From Home by Amanda Brooks. And it very much is a tale of someone who was in, I think the fashion scene in the big city and she goes to live in the country and she finds it just like a movie, eminently charming and she embraces the country life. So it's, it's fun and she's also a, a lovely writer. So I would recommend this. Sometime I want someone, here's an idea for you, Nancy Meyer. I want you to make a movie that's not about somebody from the big city moving to the small town and finding love because in reality it's much more likely that someone moves from a small town to the big city and I think they should do the inverse of that. Hallmark or whomever out there is listening, if you want a rom-com idea, do that. Move from small town girl moves to the big city or small town boy moves to the big city and finds love and fulfillment. So um, that's just a little bit about that. And so that's what's on my bookshelf. That's what my TV is turned on to and that is what my dial is listening to on my podcasts. So I hope it uh, makes you warm and cozy consuming some of this material in your daily rounds. Take care. 
Well, sometimes a simple jelly glass jar bouquet will do it, but then sometimes you want to make more of a statement. And traditionally on the sideboard, as soon as you walk in, I like to make much more of a statement, especially around Valentine's Day or even still in January when I just need a little pick me up after the tree comes down. So what I am doing here is a very, very simple, but I think very elegant and very sophisticated looking arrangement. So I recently purchased from TJ Maxx, this isn't a prized antique or anything, but I love this blue and white cash bow. I think it was about $20, $25 or something. Wow. And just like in gardening, I sometimes look at line, shape, and form. I do that also when I am looking at interior design or creating interior vignettes. And I really wanted a form that was massive enough to stand up to the expanse of this sideboard. So that's kind of my rationale for it. I also wanted something in blue and white that would counterbalance this massive light over here. So I wanted something a little bit larger. So that's how I decided on my container. And then I was recently watching, um, Stuart, do you remember last year when we did the, was it last year we did the Tamron Hall show? Oh, yeah. And um, in that segment, it wasn't long, but in that segment when we set the stage and styled it, I had a massive arrangement of white orchids behind me. I saw that, I loved it, and so that was kind of also an inspiration point. So when I was at Trader Joe's yesterday, <laughs> I saw these massive, really beautiful quality white uh, orchids, and I thought I could recreate this same kind of look on my sideboard here. It's also getting ready to be Valentine's Day next month, and I thought, oh, what can, what can I do with this? Because the beauty of orchids is, number one, they last very long. Number two, these are white orchids, and when these orchids fade, I have silk versions of them that are faux blooms that I can then put in their place when the blossom are finished, I can just cut them out and I can use the live foliage. I've showed you that, that kind of hack before. Okay, so I bought two of these. I think they were about $20. Now I could take them out. Usually I take them out and I put them in like this. But in this case, I don't need to do that because this cash po is so large that oh. I can put the entire vessel in here and then when I water them, it won't be so messy. So then I'm deciding, do I want to place them in here like this where they are both arching out kind of like that or and I don't know if this will work or not, but do I want them both facing in so it will make a heart? <laughs> now, I am not somebody who really loves a heart motif, that's but that's kind of that's kind of cool, okay? And I may have to kind of mess with them a little bit so that I get just the right presentation. The other way was cool too. Uh, yeah, the other way was cool too, but this is this is kind of fun. Yeah. And it's going to be positioned here. So I think I'm going to do it like this. Okay. So now because I don't want the innards of my display to be exposed, I want to cover them up. So I thought, "Oh my goodness, why don't I mulch them in some beautiful apples?" So while I was at Trader Joe's, I also got a bag of Granny Smith apples. And I love this look of taking fruit. Yeah, don't you love that blue and green? It looks very fresh. It looks, I think, both wintry and also springy at the same time. So that's kind of, that's my question of the day. Do you guys like to use fruit? to top dress or mulch some of your flower arrangements? Do you think that's kind of a fun thing to do or not? Um, I obviously do. <laughs> I obviously do. The answer, the obvious answer is yes. Okay, so I'm taking some of these and I am just positioning them, oh, just the way I want them to look. Now, if you were using fruit, Ooh, what, yeah, and the yeah, yeah. There's kind of a nice, you know. I'm all about a color echo. I'm all about a color echo. Apple down. 
Okay, so I still have a little bit of exposed area. Now, here is something that you can do. I always save, if I have an arrangement that I've used florists, florist moss in, and, I, and it can be kind of expensive to buy it. So I always reuse what I have, and I, I just rehydrate it, and you can see how soft and succulent this is. This must be your moss plate. This is my moss plate. <laughs> so I just put it in the sink, and I hydrated it on both sides, not only to keep it looking fresh and green, but also because when you wet it, it makes it more malleable. Yeah. So then I can take that moss and I can tuck it in into the voids there. And I think moss is what often makes makes flower arrangements look very expensive and as if you got them at a florist. Kind of alive and kind of, yeah, alive and just a little bit more decadent, I think. And I like the way that looks. Now, the brilliance of using the apples as mulch, and I can tuck some of this moss underneath the apples, is that then I don't need as much, I don't need as much moss. I just need little snippets of it to hide the exposed soil. Because if I didn't use the apples, I would really need large mounds of it, great big cushions of it, to hide the exposed dirt, to hide the innards. So I'm just adding more of this. So Stuart, when you are making an arrangement for your sweetheart, you'll, you, you can do this. Because indeed, that's what you always make your own arrangements for your sweethearts, don't you? All okay. Those yeah. All those sweethearts. All the many sweet. <laughs> All the many sweethearts in your life. Ooh, I'm really liking the way this looks. So just kind of go around the perimeter. I'm surprised Leah hadn't run in here to look at this heart yet. Leah, come look at it. Come look at this heart, darling. I've seen it. It's an orchid heart. I know, isn't that fun? Isn't, I wasn't expecting that. Isn't that fun? I know, because Leah knows I'm not that big a fan of, of the shape of hearts. But I, I think <laughs> this is really fun. I'll probably continue to mess with my apples because how do you know when you're finished? when you run out of time, because otherwise I could just keep fidgeting with it. But now I'm gonna kinda clean up my mess here. This is a beautiful blue and white bowl that I bought at a thrift store a while ago. Okay, and now I've got some brass candlesticks that I'm going to put on either side of this. And I think the traditional place to put this would probably, you'd think, would probably be right in the center. But no, I'm going to do an off-center kind of thing. Because I want this kind of visual weight to balance out what I've got on the other side. And that way, I also still have an expanse right here where if I want to put a tray here with drinks on it, whatever, I can do that. And I think it looks really lovely. So what do you say, Stuart? Should we light the candles and just get the, the total effect of how it will be when we're entertaining? Let's do it. Well, every vignette, every tablescape tells a story, and this story is that Hubs, my sweetheart, will walk in the door, and when he comes in the door, I will greet him with either a cocktail or a mocktail if it is still dry January. This is kind of a fake Paloma. It's got grapefruit juice and simple syrup and I think just some club soda in it and then some, some nuts because we're still 
still being good. Or let's pretend that it's already February and we're doing Blue Valentine's, in which case I would greet him with a real cocktail, a real Paloma, and some of these things. And in my imaginings, it would also be absolutely beautiful outside and warm enough to take this tray and sit out on the social patio. So there is the storyscape that is going on in my head as I created a landscape, a tableau right here on my sideboard. I hope you guys enjoyed this segment on Signature Style Set.